Hello, welcome to Sona Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to decorate the lovely iron-on decavilles and the S133. I hope you enjoy it. So this is a decaville light, just a small piece. I don't need to paint a huge piece for you to see what I'm doing. So you can see that the glue side is this side. You can just see the shine there in the lights. So you need to paint both sides. So I'm just going to use some paint straight from the tub. But it needs to be a thin layer of paint. I can't stress enough how important it is for the paint to be thin. If the paint's too thick, it will look glorious, but of course it'll clog up the glue and then whatever you pop onto it to stick on it won't, which would be terribly annoying. So just pop on your paint, add some water from a water pot. I'm using a two inch paint brush because I don't want streaks or stripes. I like a nice merged background. So you can see that's not too thick. You can kind of see the, the um, colour of the cream through it. I'm going to paint the other side as well, although the colour has come through quite well. So I'm just painting up the back now. It doesn't need too much more paint. So that's both sides painted. All right. Now, the problem can be that I'll just pop the lid back on the paint because I'm very good at spilling pots of paint. Not a good look from the studio floor, Kim. I want to get my water jug out of the way and I'll put my paintbrush in some water, otherwise the acrylic paint will dry hard on it. Now, you need to dry your Decaville on newspaper, but it's got paint on it and a little bit of paint will transfer onto the newspaper and paint sticks to paint. So what I would suggest you do is that you leave it on a new piece of newspaper that hasn't got paint on it, but just lift it every hour or so as it's drying. It will take a good day or overnight to dry thoroughly. Depending on the heat of the room, it could take all day and all night. So do this well in advance, but just lift your Decaville off the newspaper while it's drying. Otherwise you'll find it gets stuck and you've got newspaper all over the back, which is terribly annoying. Here we have some Decaville one which I've painted with a sort of silvery, pewtery grey. You can see the glue side, side is shining, so it means the paint isn't too thick. So it's nice and crispy and dry now, and this is some Decaville One Light, which I've painted in gold. So, to fun. Always have some baking parchment underneath your work. Um, I tend to use a towel on a table rather than an ironing board, then I have plenty of room to play. I'm going to show you how to add gilding flake. This is gilding flake. It's basically very, very thin pieces of metal that have been heat treated, so they're different color colors. So you can get some big bits, small bits, whatever. Spread it out a bit, because if it all overlaps, some of it falls off, because only what touches the glue will stick. Put the lid back onto the gilding flake, otherwise it will fly around everywhere. So very carefully add baking parchment over the whole area. Do not create air or puff of air. Do it very gently. Don't do it fast, otherwise the gilding flake will just go everywhere. Then you just add a hot iron off steam. You don't need to press. It's the heat that does the work. What you need to watch is little pieces of Decaville or Bondweb or anything when you're ironing sticking out underneath the baking parchment. Always make sure that your baking parchment covers the whole of the piece of work that you're working on. It's terribly annoying if your iron just catches that glue because it would be horrible to get it off. So always use baking parchment over the whole of your work. So that should peel off easily. There we go. So that's all stuck on. As you can see here, I've added some more gilding flake now because I want to use this as a background to print onto. I'm just going to take off any residue of the extra gilding flake that I've just ironed down. So I'm just going to get rid of all the loose gilding flake, which can take a little while. 
particularly when the Decaville is warm, but you want a flat, dry surface to print onto. So I've ironed down and taken off all the residue of the gilding flake ready to print onto. But I also just want to tell you about a few other things that you can iron on. So some of you were quite interested in these Oh, they're very fluffy and they fly around everywhere. These little artichoke heart seeds, they're very, they'll just blow away. Um, I'll just rescue them. <laughs> so um, they literally are like dandelion seeds, only slightly heavier. They're the, they're the choke that's in the artichoke, the globe artichoke that you eat with oil or with um, hollandaise sauce. So I keep them in a little tin. I used to grow them in Brighton the artichoke plant. It's a wonderful plant. It's very architectural. It's like a very big thistle. So I keep them in a little, I keep the whole choke in these little tubs with lids on. Um, so these are, I don't know, probably, I don't know, 15 years old now. I, I keep them just in case I need them. <laughs> so we always keep so many things. I always keep the lid on these things that fly away. Oh, I'm just going to iron that down now with some baking parchment carefully not ironing this piece of Decaville here because it's live and sticky. So those are all stuck down beautifully. You can also add things like sequins. I've got a little tub of whoops sequins have just gone all over the gilding flake. <laughs> that wasn't a plan was it? Never mind. I'll just see if they'll scoop over to that side. Yeah. Come on, scoot over to that side. Come on then. So anything flat and dry, you can iron onto the glue. So it's the same with the S133. If you painted that, it would be exactly the same. If you painted the Bondo Web, it's slightly different. So you need to be a little bit more careful when you're painting Bondo Web. But all these things would iron onto painted Bondo Web that you've ironed onto fabric. I'm getting bored moving those sequins now. I'm just gonna iron those down now as well. Carefully, so we don't iron on here. You can't stick things like wire or beads onto Bondaweb or to Decaville or the S133. The glue's great, but it's not that great. It's not like wet glue. So those are all ironed down now. So you can see yes, the sequins have gone all over my artichoke cart seed as well. So you need to be careful. <laughs> There's also um, mica flakes. I don't know if you've heard of mica flakes. You can add those. Um, these are it's called tea stained. I particularly like these because they're kind of bronzy colours. They're not quite as flashy as glitter. They are actually a natural product that's been stained. Um, so mica is a natural mineral. And you can get really big sheets of it and you can get these little tiny bits which i find quite interesting to stitch over they just give you a nice kind of luster on your work and it's just so easy when you can iron on things i just love ironing on and then you can stitch it just makes things everything easier and simpler I'll just iron that down unlike when you're working with Bondi Web, you can peel off when this is warm, um, unless you're applying fabric to this, um, for pelmets or something like that. But you can see that the mica flake is stuck on there now, and the sequins are on there, and the seeds are on there. And I guess I've got some little scraps of paper here. I'm very keen on making um, faux chenille with newspaper. Faux chenille is a, a quilting process, which you may know about, where you stack six or seven layers of fabric together stitch slim channels and then you cut the channels all bar the last layer and then you fluff them up and they're great fun but I do it with newspaper and when you distress the newspaper you get lovely little bits left over which I love so I save all my little bits because I'm a sad person I have lots of little bits in a bag that I keep my house is a tip but everything that I find useful is in a very tidy little bag. So most of the time I can find things when I need them. So I keep all my little tiny fabric and um, newspaper strips in plastic bags. So they're really handy to iron onto any iron on surface like Decaville S133 or Bondaweb. So those are some of the things that I was showing you in the first video. 
And I'll just give you an idea about how I would print onto the gilding flake background. Now this could be gilding flake, it could be glitter, um, but I've got a little bit of paint in this tin here. I've got a car wash sponge, which I've cut up because it's, you can usually get them for a pound or a euro and you can just cut them into pieces, the big sponges. So you get quite a lot of little sponges for your money. And if you're very good and wash them and clean them, <laughs> they last longer. Always put your block down. Don't hold it up in the air because you're pushing against yourself all the time. So add the paint the block on the table it's so much easier <laughs> i'm just going to put a little bit more on because the gilding flake is quite lively and i want you to be able to see it just pop that down there and then you add your block and you can just about see that on there the gilding flake does make a really lovely background but it is a little bit colorful so what I would do is I would stitch around that on the machine when it was dry which would give it more definition I kind of like things bleeding in and out of work I don't I wouldn't add red or bright blue or anything to this kind of colored background. I'd like something that merges in, but that's just me. I must find my baby wipes now to clean my block. They're wonderful baby wipes. So these were the things that I was showing you um, how to add to Decaville um, on the original Back to Basics one video. And I was also talking to you about the book covers and I'll just show you a little bit more about ironing papers on for your book covers. So this was one that I started and I've just done another piece of pink in my terribly tidy studio, not pink painted newspaper that's just left over from something else. You'll find when you tear newspaper that it will tear in a kind of nibbly way one direction and it'll, play, it'll tear straight in the other direction. I tend to like nibbly tears. So I tend to find the right direction for a nibble. You have to kind of support the newspaper as you tear it, if that makes sense. I think it just makes a more interesting edge. So I'm going to add this here. I'll just add another little bit. And it doesn't really matter what's on the newspaper because you can't really see it because it's all torn up. You just get little bits and pieces, little suggestions of things. Of course, you can be quite contrived and add photographs or eyes or elbows or whatever you can find in photographs, and they can be quite fun. But um, I'm just showing you how to iron down today. I don't want to overlap onto this piece of newspaper here because that's not sticky, which means that the newspaper that I stuck down wouldn't stick. So it's pretty obvious when you're thinking about it, because sometimes you forget. So I'm just going to iron that down. So you get the idea, it's, it's pretty simple. Things need to be clean and dry. Make sure that your baking parchment covers the whole area, just in case your iron hits a little bit like that, and then the glue will stick on your iron, and you'll be very unhappy. So that all stuck on there. So I could just build up and build up and then add that to my book as a book cover. The other thing that I wanted to say was if you have any newspaper samples, if you've been on any of my workshops on my um, a new starting point with my backgrounds and pretties, the torn newspapers, um, these can be quite um, fragile because they're newspaper. So you can obviously iron these onto Decaville as well. You don't have to just use the F220, the very fine one, if you're going to stitch onto it. If you want something quite heavy to protect your stitched newspaper, um, you can just iron it onto some Decaville 
painted or otherwise. And then you can make that into a book cover or a bookmark or a bag if you varnished it properly. Um, that's something else to talk about, how you would finish your book covers and things. I would use something like acrylic wax. Acrylic wax is a really useful product. So this is acrylic wax. It's a, it's a kind of a creamy gloop. Um, and you paint it on and it dries clear. It's acrylic, so it goes waterproof, which is great. And this dries clear. Golden do also do the texture gels, the gel mediums that you can use to extend acrylic paint. Um, a lot of us textile artists use the golden gel mediums, just the plain ones. You can get them in satin, matte and gloss. And I use the extra heavy gloss or matte. And then I water it down and use it as a varnish or a glue. This is just a wax to finish off. Um, you can get other varnishes and things, but I, I quite like the wax because you get a nice luster on your book cover or whatever it is that you're making. And the gel mediums, the golden gel mediums and the Liquitex gel mediums dry clear. Always check that they dry clear <laughs> if you haven't used them before. But yes, um, they're really good. So there's lots of things that you can use to um, seal your work and protect it. So. Off you go and have some fun and report back, see how you get on.